Take a look at this. It's a poll. It's from Quinnipiac. Biden leads Trump by just one point. That's if there was a 2024 matchup, 47-46. And look who's here now. Presidential candidate and former governor of New Jersey, Chris Christie. Governor, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, Stuart. You've staked out your position as the anti-Trump candidate, but you've not had much impact on his polling. Uh, not yet. But you know what? Look, um, it's really not about being anti-Trump, Stuart. What it's about is telling the truth. And our party needs to hear the truth, and the country needs to hear the truth. Joe Biden hasn't been telling us the truth. Donald Trump didn't tell us the truth before that. And Barack Obama didn't tell us the truth before that. Um, it's been a long time since we had a president who told us the truth, and I intend to be the one that does. All right, let me get to the issues. The governor of New York State, Kathy Hochul, she is considering, and I'm quoting now, unprecedented work authorization for the migrants in the state. Do you think these migrants should be allowed to work? They shouldn't be here in the first place. But should they be allowed to work? Because they're not going anywhere. Well, they're not going anywhere, so they might as well put them to work. And we're paying for them. That's exactly right. So you might as well put them to work as long as they're going to pay taxes uh, on top of it and you collect those taxes at the time they get paid. Uh, because the I don't count is, them to though, do it. that if you put a, allow them to work, that's like a magnet for more to come across the border. Well, the, look, the, the way to stop them from coming across the border is to finish the wall is to put National Guard at the border to interdict fentanyl along with Customs and Border Patrol and do all the things that Joe Biden didn't do um, when he became president. And also to stop the politicians like Kathy Hochul and Eric Adams and Phil Murphy in New Jersey from saying we're sanctuary cities and sanctuary states. They said all that stuff, Stuart, when there was no cost involved with it. Now Eric Adams is here complaining day after day about how much it's costing his city. Well, he shouldn't have made them a sanctuary city to begin with. And so all these things are coming home to roost. Uh, and the fact is that we have to deal with what we've got here in New York City and in this country um, in a much more realistic way. I'm interested in how far you would go on the border. For example, Governor DeSantis in Florida, he supports deploying the military, not just the National Guard, the military on the border. Would you go that far? I don't think we have to, and I don't think we should be putting the military into domestic, uh, into domestic law enforcement. We can use the National Guard to partner with Customs and Border Patrol, and that they'll be able to do a very, very good job. So you want to close that board. That's job one. Close it. Day one is what we have to do, because if we can't get control of our own border, uh, we see the impact it's having on America's cities, uh, and we can't have that. If we can't be a great country without having great cities, and right now our cities are deteriorating terribly. The current governor of New Jersey, Phil Murphy, he has a state policy preventing schools from telling parents about their children who question their gender. Governor, who, in your opinion, who has authority over children, the school or the parent? It's the parents. Um, and, and I can't, this is the kind of wrong-headed policy that I warned New Jerseyans about as I was leaving office in 2017 when Phil Murphy said he wanted to make New Jersey the California of the East Coast. Well, he's doing it with these kind of policies. Here's the problem with it. Nobody cares about children more, loves them more, and can help them more than their own parents. And to exclude their parents from knowing when children are expressing those kind of concerns to employees at the, at the school system is just dead wrong. Parents have to be placed at the front of the line, not at the back of the line. But schools are a local, a state issue. If you become the president of the United States, you're operating on the federal level. Yes, sir. Can you make the changes at the local level that you want as a president? Sure. You can do it by being speaking out and using the bully pulpit to say, this is wrong and move public opinion. Um, you can't do it technically, legally, but you can do it um, by changing public opinion. How far would you go on this? Would you ban gender-affirming care for young people? No, I wouldn't do that. Again, this is inconsistent with the, with the point I just made. I want parents to be in charge of taking care of their children. I want parents to be in charge of making those decisions for minors. I don't want governors in some capital making those decisions. I want mothers and fathers who love their children, understand them, and have a greater stake in them than anyone to be making those decisions. School choice. Absolutely. Parents in charge as well. We need to make sure parents are at the forefront of deciding where their children can learn best and where they send them so that their values are being reinforced every day, not undercut. You attended a, I think it's called a No BS barbecue. <laughs> it was in New Hampshire. Uh, yes, sir. You're on a campaign stop. Tell me, of the people who are going to be on the debate stage, uh, less than two weeks away, here's your opportunity, 
Who, think, who do you think spews, if I may use that word, the most BS? Well, Stuart, I'll just base it on the last debate. And there's no doubt it's Vivek Ramaswamy. Um, he has absolutely no clue what he's talking about on Ukraine. No idea what he's talking about with China and Taiwan. He wants to abandon Israel. Um, this is a guy who has read a lot of books. Um, but hadn't done much. And so I think he wins the award from debate number one. But we'll be together in California in two weeks. We can make a decision who spews the most in debate number two. No, sir, you will make that decision. <laughs> that will, will, will not be me. You think you can win? Of course. Yeah, you have to believe you can win. But realistically, sir, I don't think you could win the governorship of New Jersey at the moment. Oh, look, I don't, well, I think given what Phil Murphy's done, I think I could win the governorship of New Jersey again if I ran, but that's not what I'm running for. I'm running for president of the United States. And right now, we're in second place in New Hampshire, ahead of Ron DeSantis, ahead that, of Nikki that's Haley. That's your big hope, isn't it? Sure. You catch up in New Hampshire and Iowa. You can, that's your big hope. Uh, yes, New Hampshire is where we're staking a lot of our hopes in South Carolina. But remember, when each one of those primaries or caucuses happen, it changes the race completely when people actually vote, as opposed to all the polling that we see. Polling is just hot air. Voting is when you go in and you make your voice heard. That's what we're counting on in uh, New Hampshire in late January. And um, I'll come right on Varney and Company after I win the New Hampshire primary. We can talk about it then. That's a possibility, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks very much for being with us, Governor. Thank much you, obliged sir. to you. And let me remind everyone do not miss, please, the second Republican primary debate. It's September the 27th, and it's right here on Fox Business.